My name is Dave Arnold. I'm the director of culinary technology here at the French Culinary Institute, where my job is to teach about new technologies, equipment, and techniques for chefs. And today, uh, I'm going to be demoing the Hobart 3000 slicer, which is my absolute most favorite new piece of kitchen equipment. And we're going to be doing a technique uh, based on the Japanese metalworking uh, technique of mokumegame, where we're where in the metalworking you layer different colors of metal together, and when you sand it flat, you get a wood grain finish in the metal. Only instead of metal, we're going to be using two different colors of fish. So let's do it. So here we have the mise en place for our uh, wood grain fish presentation dish that we're going to make with the Hobart slicer today. We have some uh, salmon that we're going to slice very thin, some fluke we're going to slice very thin, and we're going to glue it all together using this mold that I'm going to show you how to make. We're going to garnish that with uh, some creme fraiche, some herbs, some dill that we've already blanched and shocked, thinly sliced pumpernickel bread, lime zest, and we're going to make a salad of fennel and apple that we're going to slice extremely thin and flash pickle with curry oil, some red onion that's going to be sliced paper thin, and finally garnish it with some pressure cooked mustard seeds. We're going to cut these apples into strips, so I'm just going to pre-slice, right? Then when you put this on the slicer and slice it, we're going to get perfect strips. We're going to set the machine on seven for this dish. Maybe I'll engage the auto feed uh, so that I can do something else while it's slicing. But look at it just like slices just pop out and I could go even thinner it's just this is about the texture I want on the apple I can already see light through it sharp 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 the second component of the salad is going to be the fennel I'm going to put it in the slicer there's like no tearing of it at all it's very thin I could go thinner but this is about where we want it from a texture standpoint onions you're getting a nice thin onion slice. It's still going to get a nice drape on it after it's been uh, flash pickled, but it's going to have a little more, a little more body. This is just some pumpernickel bread. Now, this would basically instantly turn most slicers into a pile of gummy pumpernickel mess. We're just going to throw this in the oven uh, now to crisp it up a little bit. Now, the pumpernickel, as advertised, is very sticky, so now would be a good time to clean the machine. One of my favorite things about this machine is how easy it is to break it down to clean it. So, quarter turn is all it takes to get this off. This plate, quarter turn, comes right off. Then you have this, which is basically just a protective cover, like this stuff that's going to stick to it sticks to it here. I have to say, taking the blade off is one of my ultimate all-time favorite features first time I did this, I sat there for like an hour just popping the blade off and on just because it was so much fun to do and I just couldn't believe that you could do it that easily. And that's it. Boom. And not getting cut. You know, you're protected. So the last thing you can take off the machine is the sharpening unit. Now that I've swept all the crumbs off of here, I'm of course lazy, so I swept them basically right onto the table and underneath the machine and everything, but lifts up like a car hood and then I can get underneath the whole thing and get all of the crumbs out from underneath it. So this really is a machine that's built to stay clean. Let's reassemble the machine, the uh, sharpening unit, put the plate on next, make sure it sinks in, push, pull, boom. The guard, base plate, and again, quarter turn is all she takes to get back on. And lastly, put that on. Put it down, one quarter of a turn, she's ready to slice. Boom. Very easy to reassemble. Now we're going to do the salad and the onion garnish. The onion, we just have a pickling solution here, which is basically just vinegar and sugar. And this is the fennel and the apple that we sliced before. We're going to infuse this one with uh, curry oil. Here we go. Here's the curry oil, and we're just going to go over to the vacuum machine. Okay. Because we have uh, the slice these things so thin, we're really only going to have to have them go through one vacuum cycle, and we don't need to wait a long time. So all those air holes are going to get injected with flavor as soon as the vacuum machine comes on, right about now. So you're going to see the air come back in. And when that happens, you can see how they go from being almost translucent to being 100% translucent. And now they have the flavor of pickling uh, liquid and curry oil. And so that's it. So we're just going to drain these guys off. They take on this really beautiful yellow kind of curry oil color. And then also as a garnish, you can see, like because we were able to slice them so thinly, how nicely these things bunch up. That's that. 
So you arrange the potato on a flat piece of your cutting board. Then you take and put your oven on 300 degrees and you put a cutting board and a piece of acrylic in there. Uh, you stick it over the potato, right? And then next you stick the hot cutting board, which gets nice and floppy, right? Then you're gonna wanna take your vacuum bag. Then you're gonna wanna come over to your vacuum machine. And as soon as we get, get it up to full vacuum, the air is gonna come in and it's gonna squash the plastic around the potatoes and make the mold. You can just see it get, getting molded around. After the cycle is done, we just take it out of the machine, put it into an ice bath like this, and just let it sit there for like 20 minutes. And, we'll be fine. and then when you pull it out, you get you throw the potato away, but you get this nice mold. And this is what we're going to use to mold our fish. Take this fish, I'm going to put it into the machine. The first couple of slices probably won't be <laughs> the first slice off the bat. It's crazy. Look at that. Beautiful. So nice. Look at those sheets that are coming off. We've got our, our white colored fish. And that's pretty much where you want it. So now it's time to assemble the dish, basically. We're going we're gonna to make this into the wood grain fish. So you take your mold. Just start by layering, layering your products down. I'm going to put a little bit of the curing mixture on top and then a fine dusting of transglutaminase, a.k.a. meat glue. You don't want the grain of the fish across itself a lot. You want the grain of the fish to be going in the same direction all the time. And you just keep alternating colors of fish. So, plastic wrap, put it right back on top like this. Right? Now this is ready to go into a vacuum bag. You want to make sure you stuck a full vacuum on this because we want to, like I say, get all the air out of it, all right, all of it. And ready, stop. And now the fish has this bumpy shape because of the fact that I've uh, vacuumed it like this. I'm going to take it down to like 13. Look at that. Gorgeous. How gorgeous that is. And each slice coming out of it's just dead. Perfect. And there you have it. Wood grain fish. Okay, so now we're going to plate the wood grain fish dish. So here we have the piece of fish that we've sliced. Now we're going to put on it our apple and fennel salad. A little bit of flash pickled onion. Pumpernickel bread that we toasted and then crumbled. Creme fresh. This is just some mustard seed, some celery leaves, a little bit of lime zest right here. All right, here's the mokumegame fish dish. There's no way I could have gotten this wood grain effect without my without my Hobart 3000 and the pumpernickel bread, which I was able to slice extraordinarily thinly. This, the Hobart 3000, the one I'm using, is such a joy. Uh, and it, I could not possibly have done this with uh, any other slice I've ever used.